Hello, Coach Burke with Blockers Offensive Line Academy. Today, as part of our Blockers Offensive Line Clinic Series, we have Coach Guglielmo from Keystone College. Coach will be talking about his techniques that he uses with his offensive linemen for the run game and the pass game. Once again, please make sure to hit that like button. Also, please subscribe to our channel to continue to spread the word of offensive line play around the country. <laughs> Coach Guglielmo here at Keystone College, Dom Guglielmo. Um, we're located right up in north of Scranton, Pennsylvania. Um, we're a brand new Division Three football team. Um, thank you, Coach, for having me on. Uh, we're going to talk about drill work that we do. Um, I've got some film from this uh, very wild COVID fall that I'll share with you. Um, this is my drill manual. Um, if you need anything after the presentation, I'll leave a slide up. It's got my cell phone or my email, my Twitter. I'll share whatever I want or whatever you want with you um, without any problem. So we are a hook-based team. Um, so that double under lift basically to cut that um, distance between our guy and the defender. The reason we are is being a new program, you know, we're about – three years old now in January, um, we're going to be young and we are young and being able to cut that distance down and use our leverage as an advantage um, was huge for me when I was kind of figuring out what kind of path our own line was going to take. So the first thing we do is every day we get on the boards and during our daily dozen period and we do hook fire. Now hook fire is we're going to start in our two point stance we're going to stack our hands on top of each other. We're just going to fire up and roll our hips and work on that really, um, really that timing of the punch in the hip movement. Um, I'm going to use the word rooted a lot. Rooted is when your feet are securely in the ground, you have a nice base. Any wrestler knows it. When they get that nice low base and nobody can throw them, that's what I call being rooted. Um, so we start in that nice rooted base and boom, all I want to do is see that big chest, that hip and hand moving in unison and getting a nice little drive. We're not driving our feet yet. Um, and everybody's going to go through and do that. And this is something we do every day during camp, in the season, shoot, and as our pregame warm-up. Um, hook fit, we're going to get in there with a nice flat back, elbows tucked in, face in the med ball, hands right underneath, ready to drive. And we're going to drive that bag or drive the med ball off the board. We're going to drive them straight back. Now, we're trying to sex or break off our run game progression here. And again, this is an everyday drill for us. And then we get into our steps. So I'm a step guy. Um, brace pop is that step we're going to use if they're in our immediate vicinity. Jab pop is if they're anywhere outside the framework of our body. And angle or shuffle is if he is a person removed. Um, we describe it like that initially, but we kind of give them the freedom to use the steps whenever they need to, because sometimes you got to stud across from you and you need to jab pop instead of brace pop or angle pop. And we just give the guys a toolbox. So the first thing I'm going to do is run through our brace pop. We're going to start in a perfect stance, dig our first foot in, load our hands, second foot, brings the hands and the hips, and then drive them off the back. So here, We've got a clip of our guys during this fall, stand nice and low. If you look at 77 here, he gains a little bit of ground. Basically the reason we have him starting in the center of the bag and stepping offset is so we can really judge to see if they're gaining ground with that first step. He gains a little too much ground there. He's got those shorter stumpier legs. I like to see him get more steps in keep that base nice and tight, but does a good job navigating the entire or through the entire uh, exercise here. 74, if you take a look at him, does an all right job, but I don't see his any hip release. He's got a forward lean. I When we're doing this drill, it's it should be picture perfect. You see that big chest, boom, as if he's lifting. Now, in a normal fall, we'd have somebody across that helps teach the technique a little bit easier, but 
during the COVID time, we've uh, we had to make the best of what we had. So we do that drill first and second level. Now, naturally, we're never really going to take a brace pop to the second level, but I want them working that duck walk demeanor and keeping their hands active all the way up to the second level and then striking from a movement position. Jab pop, we set the boards at any angle. So I'll walk down the line and kick the boards at different angles because no defender is going to be in the same angle. No two defenders are going to be the same speed off the ball. No, no two defenders are going to be perfect. All right. So when we do these drills, it's nice to vary them, vary the angles that they're going to get on every day because it keeps them fresh. It keeps them interested and it allows them to drill different angles. And that's huge for guys, especially when you're developing them young. So here we start with our toe splitting that board. Um, if we look at 78, does a pretty decent job gaining ground with that first step. Boom, staying nice and low. His eyes are exactly where I want to be looking at the second level for a second level defender. He's going to navigate nice all the way through there, keeping a nice wide base. Seventy-seven again. He does a really good job with these steps. He's uh, he his footwork are pretty good. I'd like to see him sorry about that. Something just happened. Let's go there. All right. Let's we'll start here. 78 does a nice job, gets a good drive on that first step. He gains just enough ground to make him break the play in the bag, which allows him to root his feet on a second step and get a drive. Now, 77 here on the left of the screen gets a good first step, but is he's trying to like squash grapes with his feet. Very choppy. I want more power in those steps. Almost like a heavy footed run. And as time went on, he did pretty well getting it. Now, jab pop second level, same drill, but instead of making in or contact on the first level, we're going to make contact on the second level. So stretch drill progression for us, that's what we now call the angle step um, or the shuffle step, it's more of a shuffle. Now we're trying to transition to keeping our shoulders more flat in the outside run game to force that defender to really play us throughout the entire first couple steps of the sequence. But when we do this, we alter it a ton of different ways. And for me, when we talk about drill philosophy and even these everyday drills and the ones that we do for warmups and the ones that we do pre-practice and the ones that we do pre-game, is I want to make them as real as possible. So when I plan these drills out, especially the second level drills and the stretch drills, I want to set up the defender where they're going to see them in a game, how they're going to play them in a game. And this is an every week scouting report thing that I do for the guys. So we want to customize each one of our individual daily dozen drills to what they're going to see in the game. And that's not neglecting things they won't see because we still want to work on those. But if we get in, let's just say, 35 minutes of indie time of practice, I'm spending 28 minutes of that tailoring drills to what we're going to see that week. Because I don't want to waste any rep of anything not getting them ready for game day. So when we do stretch drill, we're going to play that d defender like he's going to play against, say we're playing Wilkes or Mr. Cordy or Alfred State. Um, so to initiate the step, naturally during COVID, we couldn't make face-to-face -face contact, but we want to really work on that shuffle step. Now that's keeping a nice demeanor, keeping our hands inside ready to strike, keeping our pad level low and sinking those steps and, and rooting our feet between each one. 79 does a decent job here, boom, boom. 
and able to power up field. His hands get a little wild. I like to see him in a little bit more, but he does a pretty decent job. 77's very quick with it. He's he's very technically sound. Um, boom, boom. Just as if he's giving up ground is how quick I want it. Um, his hands stay inside until he gets to the end of the bag. But we do this, again, every single day. Every single day. More clips of it. These guys do a great job with it. And then we added a little second level sprinkle in there to where they're going and they're because we are a hook blocking team boom i want their hands nice and tight putting their hands to the tackle ring and lifting it up to simulate keeping those hands nice and tight all the way through the second level progression so when we talk about progression and drilling like we're going to see it the outside stretch drill progression too is we're going to go towards a second level defender and then we're going to put two guys together and run almost stunts or defensive fills that our opponent's going to do or our opponent shows or what we're going to see or expect we're going to see based on our alignment so drilling all these things functionally and quickly and efficiently because we're using the film to our advantage and using our game plan to our advantage makes these individual drills go from just something that is routine every day that you kind of have to keep motivated to do every day to telling them this is how they're going to play it that buy-in happens immediately there's never a bored indie when you tell them that the indies customized to the opponent screws to screws I know football's kind of got away from the old starting out at the end of the bags and coming in and crashing your heads together and getting the blood flowing. I, I agree to a point. I think that running them from two ends of the bag and having them crash into each other, that's a little not what Indy's about. But screws to screws is something that – really brought our physical play to the next level. This is just a raw physicality type drill. So what we're going to do is put their, we call it screws to screws because their face, when there used to be screws on the helmet, they would go screws to screws. And on the whistle, they're going to fire their hands in their hook progression. And usually the kid who sinks their hands in and drives wins. It's basically A, a, a toughness drill. B, a hand fighting drill, and C, a finishing the block drill. Everybody's seen linemen stall out, but we're starting in a position where they're already stalled out, and they have to dig themselves out of it. And it's a quick whistle. It's whistle, one Mississippi, two Mississippi whistle, just to get the blood flowing, just to get that camaraderie going, the jumping up and down and shoot. I bring Coach Cole down with the D-line sometimes, and they do it right with us. It gets the guys fired up, A, B, it gets them firing early, especially when we have those early practices, get them hitting somebody pretty early. And shoot, there's nothing you can substitute just that raw man on man pushing each other. You can't substitute that for anything. Crowd, they're sledding off. Um, and it actually, so we started five freshmen in 2019 and we started doing it week three. And our physicality and our knockdowns actually exponentially went up since we started doing the drill just because they kind of got more of a physical aspect earlier in practice. Because when you're hitting a med ball, it's not as physical as when you're hitting a person. And going screws to screws takes away that collision. Double teams is huge. Now, we have zone doubles and gap doubles. Um, but I feel it's something that we need to do every day. Every day. Now, we don't do this pregame naturally, but we go over double teams every day, even if it's a quick – if I have a six-minute period, I spend three minutes on zone doubles and three minutes on gap doubles. Um, I think it is invaluable. We try to find those double teams in our scheme. Um, we need movement on those double teams. We want to put that – we want to displace those D linemen into the linebacker's lap. We want to put pressure on – the uh, linebackers and DBs to make plays. So double teams for us is huge. 
So when we're teaching double teams, I am not a guy that says hip to hip, shoulder to shoulder. I'm a two out of three person. Shoulder, hip, knee. You got to have two out of three because tell hip to hip creates a V. And if we're going to tell a kid his shoulders need to be square when he's blocked, I think we should tell our kids that our shoulders need to be square when we double team. And with a shoulder, shoulder, knee to knee, brings that thigh in there and cuts down the gap. As you can see here, their knee to knee, shoulder, shoulder, elbow to elbow here um, with the bag as a barrier. But that's for both double teams, two out of three. Um, these two do a pretty nice job working in unison, really driving it up there, staying low, keeping that other hand free for when that linebacker or DB trigger into the gap. Um, we also have the policy, we don't need to look at the guy we're blocking. So we're just gonna keep looking for the linebacker. 62 and 61, do a decent job. One thing I'm not a huge fan of here is 61's kind of using his back leg like a kickstand that is to me not technically sound i want his hips a little bit more square there to really generate that power he's not a galloping horse he's a football player i want him to run that defensive lineman off the ball um and be really physical in there and again when you're making the best what we got i mean shoot the tackle rings and the hand shield we got everything we needed to out of this draw all fall it was awesome um also once we know what defensive shell we're playing, we're going to spend a lot, not all of our part of our indie time going over the zone combos for that. We are a zone based team or an inside zone, outside zone. We use the same combos for both. Um, this is an all inclusive drill. And these are the orders in which we do the drills. So we go from hand and hips down to steps, down to first and second level. Now we're working together in double teams and now we're either creating double teams or identifying the angles that we need to use. So we're gonna spend the bulk of our zone combo time or the zone combos we're actually gonna use. So inside run progressions. So we've got our tag, our tackling guard combination. We've got our Tay, our tackling tight end combination our SIG, our center and guard. And all of these, we're just gonna run on primarily what we think we're gonna see in the game, but we're also gonna mix it up to keep them thinking. Cause shoot, any football player knows sometimes you walk into a game and they give you something completely different and we wanna be ready for that just as much. So we'll run through these progressions and add on to each drill as we go through the day. Um, triple is a call that we used one year when we were doing three man combos. And again, we want to drill that too. I think it's, I think three man combos have their place. Um, it really teaches the guys how to work together, even though it ends up turning into a solo and a SIG in most cases, but now, now that we're we've got a bulk of the run game done. Now we have to go to the pass game. I think pass pro wave is one of the best pass pro drills that we can do. I mean, naturally you have to teach them the angle step, like all the angles. So we go A, B, C angles based on the alignment of the defender and then power step. But pass pro wave, teaching them to transition from one step to another step and teaching them how to flow with the pass pro is huge. Um, I think a lot of the time when guys get beat is they're not used to that change of direction very rapidly. So when we go through pass pro wave, we go slow and then we change our drop angle. Then we go slow and we change our drop angle and go slow. And then we'll speed it up and change the angle and speed it up and change the angle and speed up. And then all of a sudden I'm like, all right, we're just going to go A set power rapid. And I'll just go boom, 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 left, right, left, right. And I just want to see them gliding back and forth as if they're mirroring a defender. And them getting that without a defender in front of them. And I know every, every O line coach, I'm sure, 
has a variation of mirror dodge they do. This is a pre-installed mirror dodge. And I love pass pro with it. The guys hate it because I don't let them get out of their pass pro demeanor the entire practice. And they know when I go, oh, pass pro wave. And they give me the coach. I'll tell you what you could do with your pass pro wave. And I just think it's, it's a drill that has limitless possibilities. And it's something so simple. So what I'm really looking for is I want to keep their shoulders nice and square. All right. I want them to have a big chest. So our head coach, um, is like Bob Builder. So a lot of our stuff, he DIY'd COVID edition for the fall. So I got these nice uh, PVC pipes and they surely tell a lot. They tell, it's easier to see if they turn their shoulders, easier to see if they get a hunch. Um, it forces them to keep their chest and their eyes up. And it's an awesome, it is an awesome way to really install this drill. Now we want to do the, almost that drive catch type thing. Um, when we're doing the pass pro wave, but I really just want to see that transition. Now, 64 has got a nice trans, boom, very nice transition. We're moving nice and slow. He's B setting here. 62, he's trying to compensate here by taking huge steps to where he's not used to at this point, the actual kick slide type thing. He actually grew a lot as time went on this fall. Um, We have 79 is uh, one of our guards, and he does a very nice job with pass pro. Um, his freshman year, he gave up two QB pressures as a freshman. Um, it was pretty awesome year for him. He does a nice job transitioning back and forth. A little choppy. It's still early in the season at this point. The, the leaves still are green here in Northeast Pennsylvania. Um, 75s, fresh out of high school. Doesn't do a, doesn't do a terrible job. I mean, keeps his feet and a nice integrity. Um, he's, a, he's a big dog. He's got to hit the track a little bit, but he, he does a nice job with it. 77. He's very technically sound. He's a freshman right now. He came in. Um, he came in and did big things this fall as far as grasping the offense and really grasping the technique. He does a nice job. And this is something, again, we do every day. Um, even if it's just as simple as when we, when I say pass pro wave, it's not always back and forth. It's right here where everybody's A setting. Boom, boom, boom. A nice shallow set. Um, 67 is our O-line leader. Over there on the right, boom, boom, boom. Does a really nice job of keeping that base, getting that uh, drive catch going. Um, he's, he's really... He's really got it going. 66 improved a ton this fall with his pass pro. Came from a very run heavy high school. Um, and then we add in this lovely drill and the guys aren't a huge fan of it. And I, I caught it on some drill tape I watched. And as you can see, the guys are making fun of me in the clip. Um, naturally, I forgot to cut that out. So everybody enjoy that. Um, but this is a great drill. And the reason I chose this clip is because, is it pretty? No, but it's really to understand what we're looking for through the teaching aspect. So we just saw the pass pro wave and I want the big chest. This is, I want that them to be able to keep their hips nice and low in pass pro. I don't want to teach pass pro as, oh, it's passive. We're waiting for them to hit us. Da, 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 da. We want to meet them in the hole and deliver a blow. But for us to be powerful, we have to maintain hip leverage in that Z angle. So what we're looking for here is 74 keeps his feet decent here. If he sinks his hip, his hand will hang just down like, a, like an untied belt and be able to slide that ball left and right. Or just brush the med ball. And once he ended up getting that, his pass pro actually improved. So if I could go back, I would start with this and then move to the pass pro wave instead of adding it later. Now here is another variation of the pass pro wave. I know most guys just call it power step, but we, I like to use the pass pro wave just as the pass pro period. Um, we do a nice job 
64 does a nice job here. Boom, boom, boom. He drops his eyes a little bit, but he keeps a solid base, keeps solid hips, um, keeps that chest spread. 77 does a really nice job. I like to keep his hands a little more relaxed, but he does a nice job with the power stuff overall. 76, we're still working on the drive catch aspect. 79, very technically sound. I like it to be a little bit more smooth. 78's got it. He's got it. He's a, he's a, his pass pro is very good. That was a tight end. So mirror dodge. Yeah, tight end were just shuffling. So mirror dodge, um, chase the rabbit. We call it chase the rabbit because um, we like to cook the rabbit with a little extra sriracha. I like to, this is a drill that I let the guys have a lot of fun with. So if they're the rabbit, they can do like spin moves and pretend to be athletic out there or put their D-line hats on for a bit. But it's kind of taken all that, all the technique that we did for the um, wave series and then bringing it over to Chase Rabbit. And we have the Chase Rabbit variations where we put the hands behind the back, then we carry the hands and shoot. I've even done hands above your head because I, I really want them sitting back and feeling that thigh burn, that hip burn in there. Um, so the variations are hands behind the back, hands above the head. Sometimes we'll add a little punch action in there. Um, on top of it being a drill that you can really see if they're technically sound, it's also a ton of fun, especially when you go ahead and let the guys have fun with it. I think no matter what level it is, you have to make Indy a little fun. I mean, because most of the drills we've went over so far, they're not fun. So if you give them a chase the rabbit or you let them mock you a little bit, like that keeps them interested. Because if you're a fortunate online coach like I am, you have a ton of Indy time. And they, I got to have fun just like they do. Pass pro strikes. And again, um, I've heard the, oh, our guys do independent strikes. Our guys two hand punch. This. We start with two hand, then we go independent. And then we throw in the one twos and side like. So what we do is we master one, then add another master that one then we add one more and what we're trying to do is give them a toolbox because not every offensive line plays the same not every d-line plays the same and the more tools that they can master in the toolbox the better nobody wants to be an electrician with just a flathead screwdriver you need more tools than that so i feel as long as the guys can take the time and we have the time to teach them when, why, and how we're going to use these different bunches, shoot, by all means we should. So we get on the left sled, get their feet moving, and we start with just a two-hand strike. 77 does a nice job. I like to see him tuck his chin a little. I'm one of those guys. 74, he's reloading after every punch, which is something that we want to try to avoid. Um, but he'll grow. And now we're in the independent pass pro strike. So we've got the two hands. Now pass pro strike. 76 does a nice job. I like to see him keep his feet moving a little more, keep that um, posture integrity. Um, 75, we just got to fix the pass pro demeanor integrity there. But he's getting the concept, so I'll take that. As long as we're growing every day and grasping the concept, I can deal with that. 77, again, does a nice job. From his last rep, this is still better. Just I want to see that chest get pushed back or that chest up a little bit, him sitting further down. Um, number 74 there. One-two punch. Uh, we call it the drummer boy, just like drum line. Um, we, with this one, we're trying to combine the two. Again, sometimes you get that one arm stabbing. You bring that second arm nice, nice and quick to sit him back in the hole or to gain control and leverage. And we want to drill that every day. Give them a toolbox. Teach them why and how. 
allow them to grow within the system every day. And then we just add movement to it. So now, boom. I like he's carrying his hands way too high, but he's getting the concept. Next rep, his hands go down as he walks in front of the camera. Um, 76, understands the concept, but we want to decrease that swing. We want to carry, we call it carrying at Wu-Tang. Um, for the coaches who are watching, I'm sure you guys know who Wu-Tang is. So we like to keep that W because you know Wu-Tang Clan, Wu -Tang Clan da, da 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 So it's something the guys buy into. So when we carry our hands in Wu-Tang, we carry our thumbs right on that bottom part of your sternum there with a big chest. And once we punch, we punch out and then reload. And just fire with our lats and our triceps. And then we want to drill throwing that linebacker into the hole. That linebacker screaming at you. You want to use his momentum against him and rotate your torso and throw him into the ground or throw him past your face. All right. Redirect that momentum. When a lot when the D lineman's slanting back and you're in a full slide, throwing that D lineman, knock him off his track to help your buddy. So we want to drill that too. Boom. Just rotate your torso. Boom. Snap it back. All of the thing, all of these things we're adding to their toolbox, giving them the ability to use later. And it was instrumental to watch them say, hey, can we use uh if we go Wu Tang here, can we use the drummer boy? And then da, 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 and having them use the terms that we use in practice and analyzing how they can use these in certain rough situations was instrumental. It was awesome to see them take all these things and ask, can we use them in this situation? Coach, did you see that block? Because we have all this division one film of games that we've broken down. Hey, could he have done this instead of this? Yeah. Why do you think that works? And that's when you know your guys are getting the, either they're translating that drill work into their mental state, which then comes out in the game. Because once they ask those questions, they drill it in their head, they drill it on the field, then there's less thinking in the game. Then we want to wrap it. This is manly for upper body conditioning. You get a bunch of thick boys out there. I want to see their feet moving, I want to see those punches flying. Plus, it's, it's cool to see how excited they get when they can move the sled by. Um, another thing we do, um, we try to do it a couple times a week, is pass rush defense. Um, pass rush move counters. Um, so we do a ton of that. Part of the scatter report is what I make the guys do when they're watching the guys that they're going to be playing against, whether they're one, two, or three. And they're saying, okay, number 94 likes to push pull coach. We're going to use this to beat the push pull. This guy likes to long arm. We can chop him down in one arm, stab with her outside hand and then reinsert her inside hand. And I want them to identify what they're seeing, bring that to the meeting before our first contact practice. So then we can use this period to hammer those pass rush moves that are the favorites of the guys that they're playing against. A, gets them involved in game planning. B, gets them involved and they take ownership in this part of practice. And C, if this team's a big bull rush team, we're drilling bull rush. If they got this one D lineman that's really good at spinning, we'll figure out somebody athletic enough to give us a good look and spin. So we want to, again, translate, we're going to see that week into our daily practice plan. But this is one of the drills that you kind of give the guys a little ownership over. Angle ID. Um, this is more of a camp drill for us for me to install the A, B, and C angle. So A angle is anybody in your framework. B angle outside of your framework. And C angle is almost a vertical type set. Um, I'm not a huge vertical guy, but I still want to have that tool in their toolbox. Because, shoot, you never know what you're walking into every week. You got the film, but you could have a mad scientist across the field from you. So this is how I teach them what angles they should use based on just a pure alignment. Um, and we'll review it throughout the season. 
but this is mainly a two to three week camp period um, spring ball type drill for us. Twist pickup. I don't care if the opponent twists or not. I think we should, everybody should do twist pickup. It's bigger than just D lineman twists. When I say twist pickup, it's sure you have the end tackle and the nose end and the nose tackle, but you've also got that D tackle stunning two gaps over and that line and that backside middle linebacker coming across. To me, that's a twist. So we want to drill those things too. So most defense are going to throw some sort of pressure at you, some sort of uh, linebacker this way, D lineman this way, being gap sound. But Time two defenders cross paths and trade responsibilities. And we do this every week. And again, we want to see the basic ones, and we'll use a couple of the practice for basic ones, but I want to spend the majority of the time of the stuff that we're seeing in film. So if we're working on mainly third downs that day, I want to use our third down stunts in an early indie period into a pickup. Because it's instrumental. If they don't have to think about it and they can just go, me, 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 you, 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 loop, 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 and done. If it's second nature, you just let them play. The purpose of these drills is to make things, in every drill, really, I think, over, like philosophy-wise, is to drill it in their head so they don't have to think anymore. They can just go out there and play ball. And I think we should cover every little thing that we can, but still get quality reps at it. Slide unity. If you're, if we are, we are a, like a half slide, half man team. We do full slide. I think drilling full slide is huge. Um, I know offensive line coach goes, oh, well, we don't spend a ton of time on it because everybody's stepping in the same direction. But I think if we could drill it and just throw some crazy stuff at them, because you can hammer that, hey, you are responsible for the B gap, and you can hammer that every single day. But guess what? When someone crosses your face, all you need for that defensive guy to win is that slight second for somebody else to sneak right through there. So why not drill? Why not take three minutes and drill it during practice? If you got 30 minutes, take three minutes every other day and work on slide unity. Work on that communication, build that camaraderie in drill work. It doesn't always just have to come in meetings and team and inside room. Drill is where you build that unity too. Gap double teams. Um, flat pull, counter pull. I know everybody's got a different name for them. Um, we do run pin in pull. We do run counter. Um, we do run GT counter so flat pull is huge for us um one thing i always found interesting about flat poles is uh take a sidebar here we did get a crowder sled this year um i was fired up i think coach higgins our head coach is definitely getting a christmas present just because we got a crowder sled um this fall but i think when you're teaching counter pull a lot of the times all you see is that if you don't spend a ton of time on it, you just see that front foot kind of just turn. You're not gaining any ground. So when we teach it, we want to see that initial foot gain some ground and drive. Now, first rep off the bat, as soon as I say that, 64 doesn't gain a ton of ground on there. And I noticed this as we had a lot of time this fall to really work on technique. And if we look at 67, he does the same thing. So that mo that gave me a thought of like, how am I really going to coach driving, gaining ground on that step? So instead of boards, we use QB step overs. A, they're easier to move. B, you can put two together and make the size of a board and they're more functional for us. I'm a huge fan of QB step overs instead of boards. Um, plus you get you can get a lot more guys going on reps where you need this. So what we transitioned to 
was these guys are going to counter step to their right. So they're going to drive off their left foot and gain ground with that right leg with their toe pointing because I don't want any step wasted. So what we did was we just put it back there. Come on, Coach G, start the drill. Boom. And what happened was we trained. We trained that step every day. We trained that counter step every day. Boom. And as the season went on, we transitioned to where it was just a foot turn, 90 degrees, to a powerful step and drive at 90 degrees, which got him moving faster and got him moving more powerfully more or right off the bat. And that crowd just took a ride, and it was awesome. Skip pull, I mean, God's play, power. Um, J pull, skip pull. I know there's a ton of people. I've heard people call it whatever. I call it a skip pull. Um, I also – I some guys aren't athletic enough not to cross their feet. Some guys are look like goofballs across their feet. So I kind of just let them do them as long as the concept of the block is what I want. And I know it's a, it sounds like a cop out to say, I'm just going to let them do them. But guys, these are, they're football players. We got to let them play. We got to use what they're good at to make and make them better. So some guys have been skip pulling, crossing their feet their whole life. I can't retrain this guy for 17 years or seven years of football in three weeks. But I can make them more technically sound doing. Now, naturally, I'm not going to let them cross their feet over inside zone. But it's something at skip pull. I try to give them a little freedom to be a ball player. Now, we... Boom. We naturally want to insert inside out, da, da, da. the typical, but when I got the crowd, I said I was really excited and we actually used it for it because we want to collision that guy in the hole. We want to make him feel us. And because during this fall, we weren't able to really hit each other. I was like, how are we going to really get something moving? Crowd was like, it's an amazing tool. Boom. And I'm a big dog, and they're throwing that thing like it's a rag doll. So you know when you get one of those little linebackers in there, as long as our feet stay wide and we're technically sound and we keep our shoulders square to the offensive line and we're able to adjust our angle, we're going to do some nice things to the middle linebacker. Boom. And then when we're not hitting somebody, I still want to go through it. I still want to use the bags. I still want to be able to see their footwork. I still want to see where their eyes are traveling. Like all those little coaching points is going to make up for lost time for kids that didn't lost time for kids that didn't have the gap scheme experience in high school. So here we're seeing, I don't, 78, I want to see a little bit more push and less of a reach, get more explosive movement. Those are things that we can correct on these boards and we can see translate to the crowd. Down blocks, um, the linchpin of Gapsky, if you will. Uh, we, when I teach a down block, um, I could get going an hour on down blocks. Um, the first step is a winning angle. The, our, our winning angle step is the first step you take if you could sprint and cut them off without touching them. That's the winning angle. Um, the second step is a T step. We're going to smother their body and bring our um, outside hand into under their shoulder pad and lift and drive. And on the third step, we're going to insert our other hand, our back hand, inside the framework of their body and a winning area. So this is basically your 
catch all. So if they're trying to come across your face, you can bring them back in. If they're trying to spin around, you can readjust this hand to come around or readjust your left hand to come around with your right hand. Um, and that's how we teach down blocks. So this is something that we do from day one, because if you can't get a down block, your pole's going to not, if you can't get a down block, pin and pull is out of the question. If you can't get a down block, your power and counter is just going to not be as successful as you want it to be. So we found a way to do it on the slot. Now Josh here. Takes a good step, throws his hand where his shoulders should be, gets his head across, and drops and does a decent job. I like to see his base stay a little more square, but same thing here. His, his starting angle, because you have a fixed target, that's tough to get, but I'd like to see that second contact hand a little lower because of where the bag is actually aligned. And naturally, you want to put them all together. So one of our inside zone variations is we call it a grilled cheese, a GC, gut. I know there's a ton of terms for it. We call it a grilled cheese. Um, I got that from Jason Lewis at Heidelberg. Uh, and we drill the fall block because that's something a tool that we put in our belt for inside zone and outside zone. And it's important when we're running pen and everything else. And then naturally, we want to individually drill that gap seal. I think gap seal is a science. Getting a really good gap seal, I think, is a science. It's an art. It's like ballet. And drilling the gap seal is huge. It's huge. I think it's the most under-drilled part of a gap scheme play is a gap seal. But it could be the most pivotal in the success of the play. Um. Thank you guys for taking the time to watch. Coach, thank you for having me on. Uh, my email's there. My Twitter's there. If there's anything that you guys want or need or just to talk or clinic about, you can feel free to shoot me an email, hit me up on Twitter. Um, I'm always willing to share my drill stuff with anybody. I think football is a profession where we're all in this thing together. No one likes a football coach like a football coach. And uh, I'm always down to talk football and help another coach out. So, Thank you guys for taking the time and look forward to hearing from you.